In this video, I'm going to show you how to write a program to find all of the divisors of a number using a for loop and then using recursion. So for example, if we want to find the divisors of the number 6, then this would produce the list of numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6. When 6 divides these numbers, the remainder is 0. So for example, like 6 divided by 3 is 2, the remainder is 0. And so the same thing for down here. If we want to find the divisors of 8, then the result would be 1, 2, 4, and 8. We're going to use a for loop to find all the divisors. So to find the divisors using the loop, and it takes in a number n. We also need a list to keep track of the divisors. So this list will be empty in the beginning. Let's do the for loop. So for i in range from 1 to n plus 1. Basically, you can think of it as from 1 to n inclusively. So if n can divide i, so it means n mod i, and the remainder is 0, then we basically add i into the list. So l plus equals the list of i. And then after this loop, we should return the list. So return l. And we should test our divisors loop, and we pass in the number 6. So as you can see, the divisors that we found are 1, 2, 3, and 6 which means that our code is correct. Now let's rewrite this entire thing using recursion. The first step to writing any recursion is to draw the recursion tree. And let me show you how to do it. So what I'm gonna do here is that this divisor is gonna call a different function, which is divisors2. And this one is gonna have three parameters. We're gonna start at one, going up to this number, which is six, and then an empty list. And you will see why this works in a second. And this is where the recursion starts. So this function is going to call on itself, which is divisors2. And then this number is going to be incremented. So number 2, the second number stays the same. And how about the third parameter? Well, here we're going to take 6 divided by 1. And since 6 can divide by 1 and the remainder is 0, then we basically add number 1 into this list. So now this list will have number 1 in it. And then we recurse again, so we have divisors 2. This number becomes 3, this is 6, and now 6 can divide by 2. So we add number 2 in here, so now we have 1 and 2. And then we recurse again. This becomes 4, this is 6. And since 6 can divide 3, we add 3 into the list. So now we have 1, 2, and 3. This becomes 5, the second number is always 6, and now we take 4 divided by 6, and we will notice that 6 cannot divide 4. So we don't add 4 into the list, the list stays the same. Here, 6 can divide itself, so we add 6 into the list, and we recurse one last time. So here, we have 7, which is larger than 6, so this tells us to stop the recursion. And at the end of the day, we're just going to return this list. So we return this list, it goes up the recursion tree, and at the very top, we're going to get the value 1, 2, 3, and 6. Let's write the recursive solution. We define the divisors function and return divisors to, and we start at 1, we go to n, and we have an empty list. Next, we define the divisors2 function. The first parameter is i, the second one is n, and then we have the list l. The base case is that if i is larger than n, then we return the l. If n can divide i, and the remainder is 0, then we basically add i into the list. So l plus equals the list of i. Otherwise, we return the divisors2, and we increment the i, n stays the same, and we put l in there. Let's go ahead and test it. So as you can see, it also prints out 1, 2, 3, and 6, which means that our code is correct. In the next video, I will show you how to check if an element is inside an array or a list using recursion. So for example, if we have this in list method, we want to check to see if 1 is inside this list. And because it is, this one is going to return true. But the one down here is going to return false because 4 is not inside this list. 
And that is basically it for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.